Yeah, you just play pool and, and like cards. cards and do you know if you have any concerns like about college or about anything you can just talk to them about it really. You can hope and you can do what you want and you can express your own opinions and you're listening to them. You're not judged when you come up here. And the only thing excitement you have is this and it was coming up here playing pool with your friends, talk about anything. Just come in and relax instead of like get your mind off schoolwork. Um, I suppose we offer them a place that they would normally um, get to sit down and relax with their peers. And um, they're able to come up there, something as simple as making a sandwich. And they're able to do that in peace and quiet. And if they want to go mad, they can go mad within limits. Um, but it's just a place where they can be themselves and explore new ideas. And they can come up and they're not judged and they're just able to relax and be themselves and I think that's a major thing that we offer here in the youth project. How about problems if you have them? So yeah, they like, talk yeah. to them if any problems at home. Yeah, go for talk and like no one has to go to judge or not. To offer them the open door policy as we like to call it where they are more than welcome to come up and chat if they just need the chat or they can come up and do what, do what they need to do to make sure that they leave here um, in a better mood, I think, um, and be more happier about themselves. Well, I came here through the Guarded Diversion Programme. Um, I had been in a bit of trouble. And once I came here, you know, Julie and Runal started, you know, supporting me and talking me through it and helping me. Basically, after a few months, I was completely out of trouble. You know, I had got my head down in school, everything in Utreach. Um, I started talking about what I wanted to do in college. They all supported me with that, started helping me with choosing courses and what to do. And now I'm actually going on to Dublin to go to college. So, wow. and really, I couldn't have done it without. Young people that get referred to the Garda Project have received cautions. So initially, when they first come through the door, all they see is me, a youth worker who they've never met before. And all I see, or all I really know about them is, this is the young person and this is the reason why they've been referred to the project. So really that's the initial, that's how it all starts off, but it's really so much more than that. Because generally young people don't just go out and get into trouble for the fun of it. So the most important part that comes into play then really is the relationship building. And for some young people that takes a short time. And for some young people that takes a really, really long time. Because at the end of the day, the last thing that a teenager really wants in their lives is another adult telling them what to do. Particularly because it's a guard the project and they hear the word guard then they associate that with you know authority and you know a lot of the time they have a negative view on the guards unfortunately but over time we do develop a relationship so they know they can trust us and it's a safe place to come for them and you know to access information or talk things through or whatever. first came here Judy my guard diversion officer would take me out and she'd just get to know me you know talk to me about maybe I shouldn't have done this maybe I could do this um she really you know helped me kind of realize Maybe I wasn't doing what I should be doing for my future. And then I came to the centre, started doing chill outs, and you know, we'd sit down and talk about maybe I, if I had any issues, help me through that. And I think that just having someone here to talk to when I was feeling down or feeling like maybe I made a bad decision really helped me. You just don't walk in there and expect to be trusted and expect to be respected. You have to work on all those things, and it does take time. It takes an awful lot of effort. It takes an awful lot of commitment from the youth worker, and you nurture that relationship as much as possible. And you kind of there's a lot of reinforcement with it. So you constantly reinforce that you're there to support the young person. You're there for the young person. It's not that they have to speak to you. They go out of their way to make sure you're okay and to see how you're doing and to speak to you. But they never they never come up in like bad form or they never come up, if you ask them, if I come up here five days and ask them the same question five days, they'll, they'll still ask, they won't get like frustrated and be like, well I told you that yesterday. They'll say, right, well I told you yesterday didn't work, we'll try something else today. Every programme is tailored to the young person's needs, so always, when a young person comes into me, I meet them where they're at and you take it from there so you see their needs. Initial period would be an induction programme. So it's basically getting a feel for the young person and then getting to know you, you know, and creating that relationship there and that trust. Then you look at different things like their, their pastimes, have they anything that they're interested in, for example, horse riding, which is one that a lot of young people are very interested in. And sometimes we go on to do stable management, you know, as an add-on to that. And they love it, the responsibility and being able to take direction, work as part of a group, 
There's a multitude within that program itself. We play soccer or whatever, we play pool or we do woodwork then on Wednesday, like we get to build whatever we want. I'm making a chicken coop. I'm doing a dog house. Same. Uh, we offer different types of programs such as art, woodwork, um, development and group work. There's a massive range of it and a few of the skills would be um, communication, um, building up their confidence, building them up to be able to have a conversation with adults. Sometimes that can be terrifying for a young person. Like we learned how to work as a team, work with people. We learned, yeah, we learned about relationships and other things. Build trust. And we don't trust exercises. It's mostly confidence in talking to other people. We also do stuff like um, art and horse riding and canoeing and stuff like that. But to be honest, that's kind of an aside to the work because you have to do loads of work. All these things are based on positive participation and they're based on behaviour regardless of what project you're on. So if you don't behave, then you don't get to do these things. You went to sit night in the place. That was very good. With horse riding, that was good. We've done all the soccer tournaments and the painting, the whole lot. Like, so if you're good, you get things and if you're bad, like, if you have bad behaviour, you're not as likely to be chosen as the others. Like, it's a fair, fair. There's another programme that we run, which is called the Smart Thinking Programme. It's basically focused on offences and looking at and taking ownership of offending behaviour. Um, and also looking at the victims and recognising that they're not victimless crimes. A lot of crimes young people tend to view as, oh, you know, it was just a window of a derelict building or whatever, it's actually getting them to see that for every crime that takes place there is a victim, whether it's an individual or the community. That's one of the benefits of coming up now because they teach you things that you've never done before, like your social skills even, like how to communicate with people properly. Like, so like, at the end of the day, like, I've benefited from coming up here. For them to be able to go and look at a relationship and say, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not good for me. and. Um, being able to turn around and fess up to that, that, that's not good and to be able to have the right coping skills and coping mechanisms to walk away from it and being able to see the positives more so than the negatives and being able to reinforce them. Art is another programme that's very popular. It gives the young people space to explore things through a creative medium. It's always a hit, they always really enjoy it. Um, it's a very relaxed environment, but we also use the time to engage the young people in discussions about different topics that may be going on. Uh, sometimes it identifies issues for young people who may be on the secondary primary target group um, that need to actually, you know, need extra time with us to talk different things through. It was basically every Saturday uh, it just came up. That was the same, just kept us off the streets, just kept us out of trouble. They've done, they've actually made a load of stuff that they have um, donated to the community, like they donate stuff every year, they pick a charity and then they make something and then they donate, like last year they donated fairy doors to Care Haven House um, and they usually just pick somewhere in the community, they've made um, boards and stuff, art boards and stuff like that that they've donated all around Kilrush and stuff like that. Sometimes I think the young people feel kind of ostracised in a sense, so for them to be recognised in a positive light, giving back to their community, rather than feeling like, oh, you know, I'm in the limelight for all the wrong reasons. It's really good to put them out there in that positive light. And it also, it's good for them to learn about different services and know what's available to them and the work that is in the community and how they can actually give back and show their appreciation. At the moment we have a Moving On project, which is to do with girls um, going to college. So it is after them the support from like moving out of home, money management, um, travel issues, and um, simple things that some people might take for granted, but it's a major step leaving a small little town and going to a big massive city. It's tough, it's tough as well, like with like cyberbullying, like we've done cyberbullying projects, things about smoking related and like say we did first aid courses. The whole lot, like Fit, we do fitness. Fitness, yeah. We've done soccer tournaments. It's very, very good now. And like we make, I've read a few things here. And like, say I give them to my mother as a present, and then I'm in the cookbook center for a good while. 
Um, the main issues that we're facing at the moment will be um, the likes of cyberbullying and the effects the internet has on young people. That's, that's a huge thing and it's having a massive knock-on effect for people because there's no getting away from it. You know, with bullying before, you could get home, close your door and forget about it in a sense, whereas now it follows you everywhere. It's on your laptop, it's on your phone, it's everywhere. There are young people who are really impacted by the stuff that they're reading about, about themselves. They're feeling under pressure to have the perfect makeup, to look perfect, um, to get the most likes. It's stuff like that, it's very difficult and to be honest it's, it's the younger ones, our, our older ones who have, come, who have come through with us, our 16, 17 year olds are kind of going and turning around and talking about the younger ones and saying, Jeannie, you know, I wish that they would feel better about that, I wish that they wouldn't be behaving like that. Sexualised stuff, young people I think are being pressured into being sexualised more so in the past two or three years than I ever would have seen. Um, and they're nervous and they don't know stuff and they're afraid to ask stuff and they're sitting at home and they're not telling people about what's happening either so I definitely think um, the introduction of, so of social media, though it has been good, is definitely affecting young people's mental health and they're afraid to talk about it and sometimes they don't know how it's, it's easier, not easier but better to come up and get an outsider's opinion apart from family and friends because family and friends will tell you kind of what you want to hear whereas when you come up here they'll give you feedback and they'll say this might happen if you do this and this might happen if you don't do that. And then you kind of, you leave having a better idea of what's actually going on. And their self-confidence, self-esteem and um, a lot of family issues um, that sometimes a teenager finds it really difficult to understand. So um, they might necessarily have the coping skills either to deal with situations like that. Alcohol would be another thing. Um, unfortunately, a lot of young people make really poor decisions after taking a few drinks, drugs would be another one, unfortunately, that we see. Um, and it's about giving the young people the information about, about that to try and prevent these things. You see a lot of young people um, very cool, calm and collected when they're sober and then they come up with a caution because they had a few drinks, got into a fight or, or you know, um, had words with the guards, different things. You know, so it's trying to help the young person see the effects that the alcohol has on them. I wouldn't mind getting into social care. I like I'd like to do the like the jobs of the youth workers. I'd like for that to come to people our age. I'm going to Dublin to do a level five course in police and security studies, which I will follow up by doing a level eight in criminology. From coming here to getting in trouble with the Gardaí to now actually wanting to join the Gardaí is you know I'm absolutely amazed at myself really, and it's all down to what they've done for me. That you, you are a very supportive role in their life, you know, um, that they really do look to us for support and it's nice when a young person can acknowledge that as well and say thank you for helping me fill out my form for my PLC course or get my passport, however big or small, um, it's good to know that the, the young people know that we're here to help them wherever, whatever way we can. You can't really tell your parents everything. So you can't tell them everything, you just come up here, you they listen to you, they won't judge you, they won't say it back. They just tell you the best advice you want. Like, like they're like the best, all their best friend. Yeah. So like, second parents, you come up and say anything, and they listen, they won't judge you, anything like that. Yeah, they like, they like to have fun, like, they have a laugh, like, they won't be like, sure, cranky, like, they're easy going enough, like, if you, go, if you cross the line, like. They tell you to stop. Yeah. It has happened a few times, me and him, a especially me and him. I think for a lot of them they need that person who will help them, you know, guidance, somebody that they know they can go to when there's something going on and talk to and gain information about things. Because a lot of them don't have that significant person in their life, so that's predominantly a lot of the work that we do, will be individual work. You know, so it's, it's basically supporting the young person around school, relationships, family, everything really um, and trying to keep them out of trouble. Kind of like we're a bit different like since we started. More mature since we started here. Yeah. Like before this like when we were younger even like we'd be doing stupid things just for fun like now like we wouldn't bother doing that. Just think about coming up here every week. Yeah I feel like you know I've grown up since I came to the programme. You know they really helped me kind of stay out of trouble, keep my head down and know what I want to do with my life. Like, it stops us from causing them. Rather, like, rather than being downtown sitting in one of the chambers or something, we can be up here yeah. doing something. 
you see a small progression in a person and you're like, that's why we do it, that's why we're here. And even like, there's days when it's like, yeah, the young person might turn around and say, yeah, I've had a really bad day, but then I went up to the youth centre and it was just me and it was my me time. And they might get that at home and you know that that they felt listened to and that they felt supported. And like, there's such a massive difference between hearing and listening. That you might hear something, but you might feel as though you've been listened to. And I think that's an amazing service that we offer. So I remember when we were driving, driving in your car. Speed so fast, I felt like I was drunk. City lights day out before. Your arm felt nice, wrapped around my shoulder. And I, I had a feeling that I belonged. I, I had a feeling I could be someone, be someone, be someone.